So Angelotti did actually retire after 10 years at Real Madrid, which means there is a space at a club in Spain, and we absolutely jumped at the chance. It didn't take long, we had an interview lined up, which we nailed, and we were offered the Real Madrid job. We are finally allowed in Spain. Now let's push on for the two trophies that we need here. Copa del Rey and La Liga. That's right, Carlo Angelotti finally retired, 70 years old, 10 years at Real Madrid. He left a legacy behind, but he also left an aging Real Madrid squad that wasn't, to be honest with you, that good. A lot of three-star players. You're Real Madrid, you're the Galacticos. You need at least four-star players. And that is what we did. We sold £202 million of players. Deadwood, who wasn't playing many games, who were three stars, who getting on a bit as well. And we signed £390 million worth of players. The first sign is Daniello Bologna, 22-year-old right-back. Signed from Empoli for £50 million. And he looks unbelievable right back. Young as well. All young. Because I've just like signed in Wonder Kids at the moment by the look of it. He's going to be our main right back. Then we signed Johan Kaufmann, a striker. 23 year old. Decent technicals, decent, decent mentals as well. Signed him from uh, Rennes for 14 million. He has gone out on loan to Hoffenheim just to get him some game time so he can develop into a better striker but a decent player for 13 million 14 million pound you do well then we spent 95 million pound on Isnel Fornis from Villarreal our A-OK uh, centre back he's not fantastic but he has potential to be fantastic I think plus he's Spanish as well then we brought another Englishman to the club Gordon Andrew from Crystal Palace a centre back Signed for 70 million, I want to say. Yeah, 70 million. Really good centre back. An absolute rock in the defence. He has partnered alongside another Englishman, Will Reddy. Signed from Southampton for a fee of 80 million. And he's another good centre back at the moment. Could be even better. And both young players as well. Trying to get this average age down of Real Madrid because it was. Pretty much like eight or nine players were over the age of 30. We spent 65 million on Mauro Benedetti, a left winger Italian from Fiorentina. He's not the overall package yet, but given time and game time, he will develop into an unbelievable left midfield. Unfortunately, he's out injured at the moment. He's picked up a knock. He's out for another couple of weeks. Pace has got bags of it, accelerated. Agility is fantastic. Determination 17. So if he's determined enough, he will hit that one work. If he's determined enough and plays enough games, he will turn it into world class. And the final signing for 150 million. Yes, it's a lot of money, but I said to him in the last episode, I've slightly fallen in love with the guy. Bruno Alves from Tottenham has signed for 150 million pound. It's a lot of money, but look what it buys you. What a player he has turned out to be. He is world class. 22 years old. He's got bags of potential. He's got six goals in four appearances already for the club. He just suits Real Madrid all day long. And he's wearing the number 10 at Real Madrid. you got to be pretty decent to wear a number 10 at Real Madrid. So the tactic we're using is the same one we have used with every team so far. The 4-3-3 slash 4, 3, 4 4 2 Pick our best 11, and this is what it turns out to be. Unfortunately, Bellingham's out injured massively. He's got a massive injury. He's been out for four weeks so far, but you're looking at least another five before he gets back in the team, but a lower stress factor. He's just signed a new contract of 725k a week. At 28 years old, he's fantastic. He is obviously our main man. But we've got Van Bergen in goal. We've got Bologna. It has put Gutrida in there. He, was, he wants to leave. Now... I was like, okay, you're 31 years old. You're a good player, but I've got young, better players. You want to leave? That's fine. Put you up for sale. What's 60 million? He's valued at 72. What's 60 million? Oh, you can go. I was getting offers for 18 from Saudi. And I was like, you're not going for that price. He kicked off a first, didn't he? 
course he did. I'm like, I'll sell you for this price, 60 million. Between 50 and 60, I'll be, I think that's fair. Because you're not fantastic, you know? But I'll sell you for this price. And he kicked off because no one was coming in for that sort of money. Uh, then we've got Gordon Andrew. We got good to Ez. Saar, Pape Saar from Tottenham. Well, we just signed him a few years back for 93 million. He's now valued at just over 100. Guadrago, now, former mate of mine at Man City. Didn't get much game time at Man City, but he plays a lot here at Real Madrid. Do you know what? He's he's improved dramatically. But I still think I need another left midfielder to just to cover him. He's done well. Of course, you've got Ben and they've got Rodrigo. He looks unbelievable. 30 years old, though. This side is aging. And up front, you've got Bruno Alvarez, followed by Vinicius Jr. He looks fantastic at 31 years old still. 31 years old. He is wanted by Saudi Club. Oh, boy, what your Saudi Club. But that's the team we got. First game in the league, we won 5 0 against Huesca. Then we beat Catafe 5 0. Well, Batiste 1 0. And then just smash Levante 9 0. Yet you can see the goal, but you get to play anyone decent. So, which currently puts us top of La Liga. Three points clear of Barcelona already, which is good. So the aim of this season is obviously La Liga and the Copa del Rey. If we don't get this season, we can push next season. We've got 11 seasons to go, with only four trophies left. We've got a bit of time to spare at the moment. But if we can win La Liga, fantastic. If we win Copa del Rey, fantastic. But our main one is the Liga Copa del Rey. Champions League, we're not interested in, but we do have Quite tidy couple of games. Liverpool, Porto, Nantes, Young Boys, Atletico Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, Club Bruges, and finishing off at Manchester United. To say we have an easy run is not true. With difficulty our nine seasons in now, so most of these clubs have improved their teams. So have we. But on the younger side. Building a team for the future, I think. The bookmakers have us favourites to win the league and we have four players in the media 11 so it's going to be tight as long as we beat Barcelona we will be there or thereabouts that's the main aim beating Barcelona right with all that being said and done let's simulate season nine and see if we can lift the Liga and the Copa del Rey we started a month off with a 3-0 win over Espanyol before a one all draw against Liverpool in the Champions League. We beat Cadiz 12-0. And in the final game, we beat Granada 3-0. Vinicius Jr. getting the score and underway in the 36th minute. Before grabbing his second in the 73rd minute. And Pape Sa made it 3-0 in the 82nd. So far, we have yet to concede a goal in La Liga. And we are top of the league by two points with a goal difference of plus 38 after seven games. We beat Atletico Bow 7-0. Beat Nantes 3-1 in the Champions League. And in the Madrid derby, we beat Atletico 5-1. Rodrigo in the seventh minute got the score and underway in this one. Before double the lead in the 18th minute. Second half and Vinicius Jr. got on the score sheet in the 49th minute. Before Jude Bellingham in the 80th minute, making it 4-0. Rafa got a goal back for Atletico, but it wasn't enough as Romero Rojas in the 92nd minute got off fifth and made sure we had all three points. And in the league, we are flying high. 12 wins from 12 games. No one can catch us. We scraped a 1-0 win against Valencia. Vinicius Jr. opened the scoring early in the third minute before they had Diego Lopez sent off, but we absolutely battered them. And in the first El Clasico of the season, Barcelona beat us 1-0. Bold eight in the 18th minute, the only goal in this one, and we lose our first game of the league. We smashed well, so should have 3-0 now just to make up for things. And in the league, we're sitting top of the table on nine points. We beat Dortmund 4-0 in the Champions League. Before start scoring goals for fun. 
beating Villarreal 5 0. With Bellingham getting a score on underway in the second minute. And that's what it stayed like till half time. But a minute after half time, Saar made it 2 0. Quadrego made it 3 0 in the 52nd minute. And then four minutes later, made it 4 0. Before Tuna Samu made it 5 0 with two minutes left of the game to play. And then we just smashed another 11 0. At the top of the league, we are sitting six points clear now. Atletico building up some pressure. In the Super Copa semi final, we beat Real Sociedad 2 1 before beating Barcelona 3 2 in extra time in the final. Goals from Rodrigo making it 1 0 before Xavi got Barcelona's equaliser in the 30th minute. Second half, and Bruno Alvarez made it 2 1 in the 67th minute before. Rosanas got Barcelona's equaliser in the 93rd minute. But Jude Bellingham in the 111th minute gave us a goal that wins it for us. We then win 5-1 in the third round of Copa del Rey. Before smashing Manchester United 4-1 in our last Champions League game. And that puts us third in the group. We mean we've got to fight going to the round of 16. And in the league it's now down to 8 points. Atletico Madrid are not giving up easily. We win 6-1 in the fourth round of the Copa del Rey before beating Real Sociedad 2-0 in the quarterfinals. And then the semi-finals we face Barcelona. And in the first leg it finished 1-1. Miguel Gutierrez getting the goal for us in the 16th minute at the new Camp. Before a mistake by our goalkeeper in the 81st minute gave Coop Miners a chance to equalise and we go into the second leg. And in the league table, we now are two points clear of Atletico Madrid, but we do have two games in hand. In the Champions League round of 16, we beat PSG 4-1 in the first leg and 1-0 in the second leg. Before losing 2-0 to Atletico in the Madrid derby. Go to gap home, a 24th minute gave Atletico the dream start. And then six minutes into the second half, Luis Miguel made it 2-0 Atletico Madrid and we had no answer for it. But in the semi-final second leg against Barcelona, we won 3-0. Jude Bellingham in the 63rd minute, making it 2-1 on aggregate. Before Ramiro Rojas in the first semi-first minute, made it 2-0. And then booked our spot in the final in the 82nd minute, making it 3-0 on the night, 4-1 on, aggre on aggregate. And then a shock defeat to Valencia 1-0 in the league. League table, we're now four points behind Atletico, but we do have two games in hand. We smashed Barcelona 4-0 in the El Clasico. Before a 1-0 draw against FC Bayern in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. In the second leg, we smashed them 3-1 to go to the semi-finals. And in the Copa del Rey final, we win 4-0 against Villarreal. Jude Bellingham in the 39th minute got the score and underway before Benedetti in the 43rd making it 2-0 at half time. Ramiro Rojas in the 68th minute making it 3-0 and we have one hand on the trophy. And with two minutes spare on the clock, Pape Sar steps up making it 4-0 and a well-deserved win. Which means we can add another trophy to the cabinet. The Copa del Rey is now in the hands of Real Madrid. And then we smash Atalanta 5-0 in the first leg of the semi-finals. But in the league, we're four points behind Atletico with one game in hand. This is going to be tight. In the second leg, it was 2-2, which means we progress to the final. We smash Villarreal 6-0. We beat Celta 5-1. We scrape against Genoa 1 0, meaning the last game we needed to win. We did win 6 0 against Osasuna, but it wasn't enough. Atletico Madrid didn't drop any points and we finished second. But we do have ourselves a Champions League final for the first time in 10 years. Real Madrid will have a chance of winning the Champions League. And Cuadrado gave us a perfect start after five minutes. Making it 1-0.
Jubin and making it 2 0 in the ninth minute. Before making it 3 0 from the penalty spot in the 45th minute. Odegaard got one back for Arsenal in the 51st minute. Great goal. But then, me boy, Bruno Alvarez, making it 4 1. Which means we lift the Champions League. We didn't need to win it, I'm going to be honest. But it keeps me in a job winning the Champions League. Because next season, we are going to be fighting for La Liga. Well, we nearly did it. Nearly did the Copa del Rey and La Liga. Fair play to Atletico Madrid. After we smashed them 5 1, they were unbelievable. We dropped points and they didn't catch up. And it was just one game too many, I think. Finishing on 100 points and we finished second in the league. One point off Leica Madrid. Our goal difference of 143. We scored 158 goals. Conceding 15. Wow. Unbelievable. Barcelona had a poor season in all fairness. But Atletico, they went on a run and they just didn't lose. The last time we lost in the league was... The last time we lost in the league was a 2-1 loss to Levante in November. And they didn't lose in the league after that at all. Second place, it's not bad means to get another season at Real Madrid. Fantastic. Bruno Alvarez, 25 goals, is the league's top goal scorer. Vin Vinicius Jr. had 25 as well. Rodrigo had 20. Average ratings, we pretty much dominated that with Vinicius Jr., Benham, and Alvarez. Green Sheets, Amber Bruggen wins out 25. Like I said, Atletico games without losing, 26. So, it was going to be difficult. Always going to be difficult. It's just one of those things. Just one of those things. We won the Champions League, beating Arsenal in the final. The first time we've won the Champions League in a long while. They haven't won it since 21 22 in real life. So it's been 10 seasons before they win it. Copa del Rey, that's one trophy we can smash into the cabinet. We won that, beating Villarreal 4 0 in the final. Semi finals, we beat Barcelona 4 1 on aggregate. Quarters, we beat Real Sociedad. Fourth round, we beat Otavera. Third round would be Villa Frank Penendez, 5 1. But that's one trophy ticked off, so we're good. Three more trophies to go. And we also won the Super Cup of Spania, beating Barcelona 3 2 in extra time. Another trophy, but it's not part of ours. Squad wise, who got the most goals? Bruno Alvarez with 37 goals, 12 assists. Vinicius Jr. with 36 goals, 11 assists. Jude Benham got 26 goals, 17 assists. Rodrigo got 24 goals and 17 assists. Pedrego got 20 goals, 15 assists. Good season from him. Romero Rojas with 16 goals, 9 assists. Alexis McAllister with 13 and 8 assists. Pape Sarr got 13 goals and 14 assists. Tormendi got 12 goals and 15 assists. Benedetti got 10 goals and 6 assists. Assist wise, Daniele Bologna with 19 assists. Hugh Burnham 17. Goals galore is what we liked. There was just a couple of games that we slipped up on, and it was one of those things, you know. Oh, I'm gutted. We had a really good season. I really thought we were going to catch up. I really thought Atletico and Madrid were going to drop points, and they didn't. 26 games unbeaten. It's... Then I guess we go again next season. We do have a transfer budget of 183 million. We're a wage budget of about a million. We do have some players leaving. Not many, but they are on big wages. To Mendy's leaving. Rodrigo's leaving as well. I think he wants a new contract. He's joined out here. He has joined out Etihad. Probably about stupid wages. And Rodrigo is joining Al Hilal. He is 31 years old, but he has stupid wages as well. So a wage budget go up, which would be nice. Alexis McAllister is... No, he's not leaving anyone yet. 33 years old, still a very, very good player. And Cucurella's leaving as well, joining Bournemouth. 33 years old, done well. But at least some space in our squad. If you haven't noticed, we haven't got a very big squad. It is, it is literally one page. There's no scrolling up and down. 
So we do have to bring in some more players. And hopefully next season we will win La Liga. But we've added one trophy to our cabinet, the Copa del Rey. So all we need now, Conference League, FA Cup, La Liga. Ten seasons to get three trophies. Should be doable. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please smash the like button, comment down below, and hit subscribe if you haven't already for more of my FM24 content. Spain is not as easy as it was going to be. Next year, we're going to smash it. Undefeated. Tell you now. Until next time, guys, stay safe, look after yourself, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Toodles.